Folks, you are looking at the biggest flail mower that I have yet to test. We're gonna put this to work in another video soon. I wanna give you an overview though of this monster, along with the extra hydraulics that are required to operate it. Now, this is not for a tiny tractor, okay? You're not gonna see a 1025 or a 2032R or even a 3039 are operating this, probably not even a four series, okay? This is gonna be for something like a utility tractor here. This is made to run on 50 to 80 horsepower at the PTO. This bad boy, well, varies uh, on the exact setup, but around 1,200 pounds, all right? It's a beast. But if you're looking for something that can do some serious cutting on a big tractor, extend all the way out where you need to, go down in ditches or up on a ditch bank or on a little hillside like that too, this is what you want. Let me tell you more about it right now. So this is the Del Marino Flipper 186 Super. So the number in Del Marino and a lot of other um, foreign companies as well is gonna be in the metric system. And so the 186 is centimeters. So you can convert that to inches. It's about 73 inches uh, right on that as far as the cutting width goes. The overall width is roughly a foot wider than that. This is the biggest unit in this series, all right? And it's gonna be a well, quite a bit beefier than the regular flipper that would only either manually or hydraulically side shift. That's gonna sit closer to the tractor. It's not gonna weigh nearly as much. It doesn't require as beefy of a frame on there because you're not putting as much stress on it and the different kind of dynamic load points that you can get with this mower here. We'll start with the connections here and then work our way on back. You're gonna see there's four hoses going up to the tractor that are gonna plug into the tractor. That means there's two rear remotes that you need to have to operate this one remote, you're gonna see two cylinders will side shift. The other remote is actually gonna tilt this mower up or down. Now this big old beefy frame here is gonna work with a category one or category two three point hitch. It is not quick hitch compatible. We've talked about this previously, but with these PTO shafts shifting one way or another, the quick hitch just gets in the way and would restrict that PTO shaft from going over any further or you would potentially bend the PTO shaft and damage everything. So that's the reason they're not compatible. You're gonna see a parking stand on both sides of this frame and then our drive line, which is included. Common question I'm gonna answer right now. PTO shafts, are they included with flail mowers? Are they included with brush hogs? Are they included with tillers? If you need a PTO shaft, it comes with it, okay? At least from Good Works Tractors. We don't sell a single thing that needs a PTO shaft that doesn't include it. If you, a chipper, that's another one too. Snowblower, you got any others, Chris? Well, you get the idea. If, you, if it requires a PTO shaft, it's gonna come with it. Category six is the PTO shaft. It's a monster, a beast of one. You can see how long it is here, but it's gonna work just fine with the 540 RPM. As you get close up views of this thing, I mean, there is thick steel all over. Uh, the sides along here are six millimeter, which looking it up converts to about quarter inch steel on there. It's, that's how you get to 1200 pounds. You know, there's, it's, it's a honker. Uh, up here, I don't wanna forget about these. If you are not using it, you have all these hoses unplugged, you can just take the end of your hoses and plug them and just pop them right in here. It's just little storage spots for them. A uh, really nice little touch. There are zerks all over, all over the cylinders, all over the pivot points and the swing points. A ton of zerks all over this thing. So that's really nice to keep it nice and greased up. And so this is, I think we have this over as far as it'll go this way. So everything will swing out that way. Um, when we were eyeballing it yesterday, when we were kind of just setting it up, sticks out almost four foot beyond the tractor tire. There is a chart out there. Uh, it's different. The amount, you know, you get a common question, how much does a flail mower stick out beyond the outside of the tire? Well, that depends on how wide your tractor is because everything's gonna start centered off of the three-point hitch, all right? And then depending on how wide of a mower you get, depending on how wide your tractor is, determines how far beyond the outside of that tire is gonna stick. So uh, we'll put those charts in the, in the listings too so you can scroll through that and then do those calculations yourself. All right, so moving back more to the mower, you know, you have these two cylinders again. This cylinder here is gonna be the one that side shifts out, okay? It, it kind of pushes everything out that way. This cylinder here is gonna be the one that retracts and rocks this thing up or extends it out to extend down to a ditch that way. 540 RPM gearbox on here, now this is, you don't really see this too much in the States, but over in Europe, uh, 2,200 RPMs, you can put this somehow with a conversion kit on the front of your tractor. You get it like a front three-point mount if you have it, I don't know. Get another PTO shaft that goes off of here and operate it on the front of your machine. Again, I don't, I don't know how that all works. I just know that's an option. That's why you see uh, some other stuff going on. All right, so looking back here at the mower itself, you have a big old roller on the backside, about a six inch roller. I think it's 160 millimeters. So again, just doing some rough conversions there. Flail mowers right along the ground on the rear roller, all right? And so that's gonna be the, the back stop point and then you adjust the cut height in two different ways. The first way you adjust cut height 
is by moving your roller in one of these different spots, okay? And there's another place just like this on the other side. So if you want to have a higher cut, you can move the roller down and that's gonna start you off with a higher cut. The other way that you increase or decrease your cut height is actually with your top link, okay? Whether it's a manual or a hydraulic top link, because what that's gonna do then is, let's just say your mower's like this and you lengthen out the top link, it's gonna push the front of that mower back and tilt the whole thing up. And so then your rotors that are right here, um, or your blades I should say, they get higher off the ground. So if you're low here, you extend your top link, it extends out and it's just higher up off the ground there. Right here you're gonna see some skid runners. I believe these are optional. Uh, they are also gonna have an adjustable height here as well that you can set to probably match your rotor I would expect. I've never used one that has these skid runners on it and I don't know if these are even gonna be touching the ground or not. Maybe they will be, maybe they're not, I don't know. But it's an option on there anyways, uh, to say the least. And then there is a rubber, a hard rubber deflector flap on the front. So it's gonna just knock down stuff as it's spinning around and getting chopped up. What you have going on underneath are gonna be either a choice of hammer blades or Y blades. Now, we found most folks are going with hammer blades these days. Um, y blades are good for grasses, okay? Hammer blades are, well, that's if you're looking for a specific application or a primary application, I would say Y blades are good for the grasses and if you're doing brambles or saplings, that kind of thing on occasion, okay. If you're doing more rough stuff on a regular basis and hammer blades are where it's at, Again, we've done a lot of videos on, on flail mowers and you get a lot of feedback then from folks that have used them for a long time as well. And it seems like more and more folks like the hammer blades even for maintaining your lawn on a regular basis. Probably not on a machine this size, but you can mow your lawn with a flail mower and get a nice finish cut on there too. Common question about driveline protection, all right? There's no slip clutch on here and there's no shear bolt. So what is protecting the driveline from snapping off if it's bound up? Well, you have two different things going on. Number one, this is a belt drive system. There's three belts on this one. The smaller units have just two belts and it's just got a belt tensioner on there that you tighten down to the right tension. And then number two, on that rotor that's spinning around underneath here, every single blade, whether it's hammer blades or Y blades, is on its own little hinge, all right? And so an individual blade's only three or four inches wide. And so when it goes around and whacks a rock or a stump or anything else, that hammer blade is not rigid. It has flex, complete flex, to just kind of bend right around that as the rotor's spinning around really quickly. And so as you're moving forward, it whacks something, it gives and just kind of skips around and keeps on going. So it's totally different than like a brush hog, which has rigid blades that are on there um, and don't really have that flexibility and require a slip clutch or a shear bolt to protect the drive line from snapping. This is a different setup. So Del Marino is not a new company. <laughs> if you look at this sticker here, 1875, okay? That's when they started almost 150 years ago before all this kind of stuff was even around. And Italy, for whatever reason, seems to be a hotbed of flail mower manufacturing. Um, and Del Marino is based over in Italy and that's where they get imported from over to us. So they're not made in the States, but they're not made in China. Um, We've been selling these for several years ourselves. This is our fourth year now, I do believe. And they just keep getting more and more popular. And I am going to mention another brand that we can get, which is Befco, all right? And they do make some really nice flail mowers. I saw them in person at, at the farm show. Um, they're also quick hitch compatible, okay? So you ask, are they quick hitch compatible? These are not. That's a downside to a flail mower. Befcos are, but you're paying a heavy premium for those like a 25, maybe 30% premium for really just that quick hitch compatibility. Um, high quality mowers, I just, unless you guys tell me otherwise, I just don't think that you're gonna see those for sale. If somebody wants a special order one, you can, but that's why we're sticking with Del Marino. I just think they're the best value out there. We're proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a liquid ballast weight. It goes right inside your tires, completely hidden, we're big on safety on this channel. These tractors are just too light and tippy right out of the factory. Not only is it gonna help with safety, keeping those rear tires planted on the ground, it helps with loader efficiency and traction too. The benefits of RimGuard include being the heaviest all natural liquid ballast weight on the market. It's not gonna corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride. It's not gonna freeze and it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. Find the dealer near you at RimGuardSolutions.com. All right, now I wanna get into this whole fancy shiny looking thing up here. We just got this put on the Kubota, we had this on a four series a while back, but I wanna tell you all about it because you might need this if you're gonna run a mower like this one or a snowblower or you have a hydraulic top and tilt and then you need some additional functions beyond that. Let's get into it now. This is from Summit Hydraulics, all right? They're a, a discount club partner of ours. Use code GWT, you save 5% off of your order. Pretty much anything over there at Summit Hydraulics website. 
you get your discount, then that's how they can track the commissions and I get a commission then based off of those sales too. So this is a six port multiplier and how this works is this unit here requires you to have at least one existing rear remote, all right? Or if you can find a way to maybe put a T into uh, your regular loader functions and then plumb it back here, you could utilize it that way too somehow if you got creative, but easiest way is if you have at least one rear remote and then you can do what we did we have two rear remotes on here, okay? I don't want to overconfuse you, but we have two rear remotes down here that came standard on this model of tractor. Pretty uncommon, uh, but it happens here. So we had a pair of hoses made up that you can see right here. They're gonna plug in to one remote. Two hoses is one remote, all right? You have flow going both ways. So that's why there's two, two remotes on there. One sends flow one way, the other remotes, or the other outlet sends flow the other way. So those run in here right into the side of the outlet. Oh, I got those caps off of there. Let me put those back in before they get all dusty. So it's sending flow then through everything in here. And there's a solenoid that you can't see right now, but they're on the backside of each one of these pairs, all right? And so a little electrical control box with switches mounted right inside the cab, just simple wiring, you just take it right in there. And then you just, we have it plugged into a cigarette lighter or you can put it into your battery terminals or a fuse box, however you wanna wire it. There's a lot of different ways to do that. And then you select which circuit you want, all right? So one, two, three, four, five, six. And so if you want to select circuit one, you just push one on in there, and then you use your regular lever that will control this to move it one way or the other, and then it's gonna, I think circuit one side shifts this out, all right? So we side shift it out that way. And then if we want to do the same thing with circuit two, we turn circuit one off, just a little switch in there, turn on circuit two, and then it's gonna send all the hydraulic flow through the other set of hoses to our other cylinder to tilt it up or down, that kind of thing. And you might say, well, I don't need all six of these outlets on here. You don't have to get a six bank uh, multiplier. You can get just a two or a three or a four or whatever. You can get smaller ones, but I figured I'd go as big as they got because otherwise I'd regret it sometime down the road. And we've used all of these, or almost all of these at some point, uh, three different hydraulic remotes on a snowblower, hydraulic chute rotation, hydraulic deflector, hydraulic back drag, and then I had a hydraulic top and tilt, so that was five of them up here. And then I think maybe we had another one running up front to control an angle blade or something. So there's, believe me, if you want to, you can find a way to use all of these. So I'd encourage you to go with at least one extra than you think you need just to have that little bit of reassurance. And so the cool thing about Summit Hydraulics is these are DIY solutions, all right? You don't need to take yours into a dealer to have it installed. Um, and in fact, a lot of the, the third function diverter kits for upfront, if you want to run a grapple, those include the hoses as well. We've done some install videos on those too, but this is more for adding additional hydraulic functions on the backside of your tractor. But this is a really cool cost-effective way to get more hydraulics on your tractor versus paying dealer prices for OEM kits when this is doing the exact same thing. Now you're gonna see this black bracket here that kind of goes down, has a leg going down over there and secured. That's the tough thing about some of these cab tractors is there's not really an easy or convenient place to mount uh, a multiplier, or at least one this big. If we would have gone with a smaller one, we could, could have probably found a place to put it. But with the six bank, we went ahead and had a local fab shop just bend this up and make this for us and then have a little shelf on here to mount it to. And I think this is gonna work out really well. Um, almost looks like it just belongs there. I, it, the guys, I had the guys at the shop uh, kind of template it out and then take it over to the fab shop and, and do this. So it turned out really well. I'm really happy with it. Now, if you have an open station tractor or other models of tractors, I don't think we had to get any kind of special bracket like this for the 4066R, or if you have a, a, a rollover, just an open station, you don't have a rollover bar, the ROPS bar, you can just get some clamps and clamp it right to that too. So I think, man, I wonder if uh, Eric Perry, if we showed that in that video on his four series open station. Yeah, I think he's got that on there too. So uh, if we can find that footage, we'll show you that. And then since I know you're gonna ask, the hydraulic top link here, I don't have a good source for those right now besides Amazon, and that's where I found those at. And I've, I've kind of put together a collection of different sizes of hydraulic top links. And so you'll see that in an Amazon store that I have. Um, not that I sell the stuff that's in the Amazon store, but it's more, I've just kind of made collections of things that you can find on Amazon for tractor owners. All right, folks, so that's gonna do it. Again, we have flail mowers big to small. The funny tops are great for the small tractors like the 1025s, the BX, even the two series or the LX, that kind of thing. A manual offset. They're weight appropriate, they're size appropriate uh, to those smaller tractors. You start to get bigger tractors, you can get hydraulic side shift, hydraulic um, tilt and side shift, that kind of thing. We're happy to help you out and guide you to that right selection. Just be aware if you're gonna get hydraulics on there, you have to have the extra remotes to operate it. Otherwise you can get manual, at least on the smaller ones. There's no, 
there's no manual offset on this. This thing is way, way too big to try to, to shove it one way or another. Make sure you check out Goodworks Tractors if you're looking for a flail mower or anything else for the three-point hitch or the front end loader of your tractor. We ship all over the country every day of the week. Prices include shipping, rewards, and financing too. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and if you did, we'd love to have you tag along. Hit subscribe right down below, and take a look. We have over 600 other videos out there for you to browse. I wanna thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by, and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.